What is up insaners and welcome to the first ever video of the FIFA World Cup Fantasy game. In this one guys, we're gonna cover a step by step guide on how to play including the registration of the game, creating a team, making transfers, how does the scoring happen and everything else that you need to know to get you going. This is a very important video guys so make sure that you hit the like button. If you enjoy the video today, you can also subscribe to the Insanely Football YouTube channel for more FIFA World Cup Fantasy content and with that, let's start today's video. Now guys, the first step to start your FIFA World Cup Fantasy journey is to register on their website. So the website is play.fifa.com. So if you've already registered a FIFA Plus account, then you have to log in with your credentials. If you haven't guys, you create your account. You can either do that first and then start building your team or else you can just go to the website play.fifa.com and you can select FIFA World Cup Fantasy game post that you can start creating your team and once you have to save your team guys then you can make your account there guys i'll add the login link in the description below as well so you can start the process from there as well coming to the team creation process guys now first when you come onto the page you'll be asked to select the team name you can choose this to do it right away or you can probably do it at a later stage now guys to start building your team you have a budget initial budget of 100 million and you have to build a team of 15 players now you can create your team with a different set of formations so you can go with four defender formations you can go with three defender formations and you can also choose a formation which includes five defenders now you can change the formation to the formation selector on the team page by removing a player from one position and then adding in a player from another the overall composition of the team should include two goalkeepers five defenders five midfielders and three forwards now as i mentioned earlier guys the starting budget is 100 million and this will rise to 105 million for the knockout phase. Now moving on to the rules for the match days guys, there will be a total of 7 match days. There will be 3 match days in 3 rounds of the group stages where you can select a maximum of 3 players per nation. Then there will be a different match day which will be the round of 16 where you can go for 4 players from 1 nation. Then quarterfinals which basically allows you to get 5 players per nation, semi-finals with 6 players. And the final, in the final game guys, you can select a maximum of 8 players per nation. Now let's talk about the rules for substitutions and captaincy guys. Now a total of 11 players will be playing every match day in your team. In terms of going for a captaincy guys, you can select a captain player, you can select a captain from your team in those 11 players. So you can select a captain for each match day. A captain basically will score you double points. So let's say if somebody, let's say if you have a Lionel Messi, for example, as your captain and he's scoring 10 points in a match day. So those points will get doubled and you get 20 points from Messi. Of course, you can change your captain in a match day. So basically, let's say if the match day is spread across four different days, you can select and change your captain before the start of the first match in that day of the match day. guys. So let's say, for example, in match day one on day two, you can select a different captain in your team before the start of the first match of that particular day and you can do that spread across different days in a match day. I know it's a bit confusing, it's a bit overwhelming probably if you're hearing this for the first time but do let me know if you have any questions, if you have any doubts in the comments below. Of course, you can only choose another player who's yet to play. So for example, if you have an Mbappe in your team for example and if he's already played, he was not your captain now you can't go back and choose him as your captain. Now coming to substitutions guys, there will be 4 players as substitutes on your bench and that will include a goalkeeper. Now if you don't make any changes, let's say if you just have 11 players, they play the entire match day, you don't make any changes. So players will come on as an automatic sub to replace a player who hasn't played in your team. So let's say for example, by chance, we'll take the example of Messi again, for example, Messi doesn't start for example. So he will automatically be substituted by a different player on the bench. And what order will that bench player come in? I think that will depend on the formation and the rules of the fantasy game. Now if you don't want that guys, you can also do manual sub until the start of the final match of the match day guys. So you can change your substitutions, you can change your players, you can get in different players from your team for yet to play the game and then they can score points instead. Now once you make those substitutions guys, the player you are taking out and who will be now on your bench, now those points will be cancelled. So let's say if you have a defender in your team who's maybe just scored 2 or 3 points and you want to replace that defender, get in a different attacker for example and the formation is legal and valid. So those defender 2 or 3 different points, whatever he scored, those won't be counted 
and they'll act as zero now. Again, if you have any doubts, if you have any questions, please feel free to add those in the comments below of this video. Coming to the rules regarding boosters, guys. Now, boosters basically act as chips. So if you've played FPL before, if you've played UCL Fantasy before, you know that we get certain chips in the game to make things interesting, to give us some advantage. And in this scenario, guys, in the World Cup Fantasy game, we have boosters. Now, so we have three boosters in play. We have the wild card, which basically acts like a regular wild card in FPL. So if you've played FPL, you'll basically be getting unlimited transfers for a particular match day. Of course, they won't be just any transfers. What I mean to say is that you won't be given unlimited budget. Whatever your value or your squad value is, that will be your total budget. But you'll be getting unlimited transfers so you can make maybe 5, maybe 10 transfers in your team and no points reduction will take place. That's the wildcard chip. Now moving on to the 12th man chip and this is very very interesting. So basically what will happen here, there will be one additional player that will be allowed to score points for your team in a match day guys. So basically when you select this particular player, the 12th man, it cannot be substituted, captained or transferred. You can select any player to be as your 12th man and the budget and team restrictions don't count here. So what I mean to say is that, let's say if you've already have three players from Argentina for example and you want another attacker, so you can go for the fourth player from Argentina. So here the team restrictions won't apply, here the budget restrictions won't apply. So you can select any player with any value. So it can be the most expensive player from Argentina as your 12th man once you activate and use this chip. Now coming to the third booster guys and it's the power captain. So this chip basically will allow you to get double points from whichever player that scores the most points from your 15 man team. Now once you use the chip, once you activate this chip, basically the player who gets the maximum points in your team he'll be automatically assigned the captaincy and those points will get doubled. So for example, on a particular match day, if you have this chip activated and a player scores about 15 points in your team and that's the maximum in your team, so that person or that player will be the captain and the total points from that player would be 30 in that scenario. Now, one thing to note here is that guys, a booster or a chip, it can only be used once and multiple boosters cannot be used at the same time in the same match day guys so let's say for example on match day one you have your 12th man activated you cannot use your power captain similarly if you have your wildcard activated in match day two or match day three you cannot use a different chip then guys i'll be making a separate video where i'll be talking about the chip strategy the optimum and the best chip strategy to kind of go for so do watch out for that in the coming videos now moving on to the transfers guys You'll be given a limited allocation of free transfers to be used over the course of the World Cup and it depends on the stage of the tournament. So basically pre-tournament, before the start of the tournament guys, which is right now, you'll be getting unlimited transfers. Now before the start of match day 2, it'll be 2 transfers. Again before the start of match day 3, it'll be 2 transfers. Before the start of round of 16, it'll be unlimited transfers. Quarterfinals will be 4, semi-finals will be 5 and before the final you'll be getting 6 free transfers. Another very important thing to note here is that guys, during the group stage, one transfer can be carried over into the next group stage match day. However, due to unlimited transfers between the last game of match day 3 and then the start of round of 16 where you'll be getting unlimited transfers, you won't be able to carry a transfer at that time. At any stage of the tournament guys, let's say if you exceed the allocated number of transfers. So for example, let's say before the start of quarterfinals, you have four transfers, but you end up making five. Then for every additional transfers guys, it'll be three points that will be deducted from your total points. Also, once the transfer is confirmed, you will not be able to reverse a transfer. So be very careful about what players you get in or take out. Now let's talk about the scoring system guys. The scoring system is a little bit different from FPL or UCL Fantasy. If you've played these fantasy games before, now for an appearance for every player, it'll be one point if it's 60 minutes or more. But the bare minimum has to be 60 minutes, guys. For an assist, it'll be three points. For a yellow card, it'll be minus one. Red card will be minus two. Own goal again will be minus two. If a player wins a penalty, it'll be plus two. If a player concedes a penalty, it'll be minus one. Now talking about specific positions and coming to goalkeepers first, guys. So if a goalkeeper keeps a clean sheet and has played 70 minutes or more, it'll be plus 5. Now for the first goal conceded guys, there won't be a deduction of points. So let's say if a goalkeeper loses the game by 1-0, of course he'll just get the appearance points, but he won't be getting the clean sheet points. In a different scenario guys, for additional goals conceded, so let's say if a goalkeeper concedes more than 1 goal, it'll be minus 1 for every goal conceded. 
I know it doesn't happen a lot, but for every goal scored by a goalkeeper, it's plus nine, which is amazing. For every penalty save, and this doesn't include the penalty shootouts, guys, it'll be plus three. For every three saves a goalkeeper makes, it'll be plus one. So coming to defenders, and for a clean sheet, a defender should have played or must play 60 minutes. So remember, for a goalkeeper, it was 70 minutes. For a defender, it is 60 minutes or more. So for a clean sheet, a defender will be getting plus five. For first goal conceded, like the goalkeeper, it'll be zero points. For every additional goal conceded, it'll be minus one. Now for every goal scored, it'll be plus seven. So try to get in players, try to get in defenders, which are goal scorers for their teams, or they possibly can score a goal in the fantasy game. And that should put you in an advantageous position. Also, I don't have to mention this guys, it's pretty much obvious, but try to not get in the defenders or try to not get in the players from teams who have a tendency to concede a lot of goals or who have a weaker defense because after the first goal that will be conceded, it'll be minus one for every additional goal conceded. Coming to midfielders now guys, for every clean sheet, it'll be plus one and like the defenders, the player should have played 60 minutes or more. Now for every goal scored, it'll be plus five. For every three tackles, so if a player makes three tackles, that player will be getting plus one. For every two key passes in a game, guys, it'll be plus one as well. So try to get in players. So let's say if you have the likes of Kevin De Bruyne, if you have Sane, if you have a lot of different options, which are a slightly in the premium category, also try to get in a couple of players, maybe at least one single player who can get these tackles in, who can get these key passes in, and who probably is a budget option, a budget enabler, so that you can probably get an overall better balance in your team. And that should help you to get in decent players who can give you good points. Coming to forwards now, guys, for every goal score, it'll be plus five. Also, for every two shots on target, which is very interesting, the forward would be getting plus one. So try to get in forwards who take a lot of shots, who will also probably be getting shots on target. The possibility, I mean, must be higher or should be higher. And that should give you plus one as well. Now, forwards don't get a point for clean sheets. So if your forward is getting a clean sheet, he won't be getting any points. Also, similarly, the points won't be deducted as well for every goal conceded as well. So try to get in forwards who are goal scoring forwards, who take a lot of shots, maybe who are selfish players, maybe who will try to score the goals themselves. And that should again put you in a good position. Now, coming to the match day schedule, guys, the match day schedule is basically spread over different days. So when we talk about the match day one schedule, which is the group stage game, first group stage game, that is the longest match day, guys. So it's basically spread over five days. Then it's the second group stage, match day two, which is from 25th November to 28th November. Match day three is 29th November to 2nd December. Then we come on to match day four, which is basically the knockout stage, the round of 16. That's basically from 3rd December to 6th December. Match day five is quarterfinals, which is again just two days from 9th to 10th December. Then semifinals, again, 13th and 14th December, which is again two days. And the knockout stage, the final and the third place game as well, is 17 to 18 December. So these are the match day schedule, guys. Make sure that you make a note of these, you maybe save these, and that should really, really help you play this game effectively. Now, a couple of things that I've not covered as a separate screen, guys, is that basically there'll be a leaderboard. So once your team has been saved, it will automatically be entered in the overall leaderboard where you can see where you stand against others. So that's basically talking about your rank as compared to the other teams playing this game. The overall leaderboard it also includes all the other users who have entered the game with the team. There'll be mini leagues as well, guys. So you have the ability to create and join unlimited number of public or private mini leagues during the duration of the World Cup. So you can create a public league, which will basically be available for all users to join. And you can join those from the joiner league page. So you can create a public league and basically you can share that league information by a league code or a link. You can invite via email, you can invite via Facebook or even via Twitter. Also, if you've created a league, guys, you'll be able to remove users from your league until the league starts scoring. So that will be it for my side for this video, guys. I've tried to cover as much information as possible in terms of getting you started with the fantasy game, with the World Cup fantasy game. I hope this information was clear, guys. Start your process, start your journey, start your fantasy game journey. And in case if you have any doubts, if you get stuck somewhere, if you have any questions or if some portions weren't very clear with you, make sure that you reach out to me. You can DM me on Twitter. You can reach out to me on Instagram as well. Or you can just add your comment below the video. I'll be happy to help you guys. Now, there'll be separate videos regarding chip strategy. So the optimum chip strategy that you should follow. There'll also be separate videos talking about budget picks, 
about best options to kind of go for make sure that you also follow us on instagram the handle is insanely football there will be a lot of content coming up that should help you play the game in a much better way guys we'll also be releasing a draft video very soon so do watch out for that as well make sure that you hit the like button if you enjoy this video today guys you can also subscribe to the insanely football youtube channel if you want to stay updated about our world cup fantasy content guys thank you so much again for watching and i'll see you in saners in the next one Thank you.